welcome to a beautiful sunny day on Mamto. Zones are on the tree cliff at the moment. The wind is about 15 mile an hour from the east, directly from the east. So we're on the pimple where we're going to take off. Uh, it's looking like it should be a good day. It should be nice and thermic up there and we're hoping to get high. <laughs> Tim Sweet from Avian, sticking all these funny little stickers on the back of your harness. What the bloody hell are you doing? So if you look up there between the uprights, you can see we've got a sensor pod there. So that's got a, it's got various sensors in it, including a um, camera. So that's going to be doing motion tracking. So the idea is that's going to be recording the movements, control inputs that you're putting in through your harness. And then we've got um, various accelerometers and, um, and sensors inside that pod. We've also got these things, which are RTK GPSs. Uh, what, one, what is? That's, uh, that's an RTK GPS. It's like a GPS sort of souped up version that's um, accurate to within less than a centimetre. So up on a hill somewhere over there, Julian's put a base station on. Um, so one of the issues with GPS is that because it has to come through the atmosphere, there's interference with the atmosphere. So what you need to know to get a really, really accurate GPS signal is exactly what that interference is. So if you have one base station which isn't moving that records the that records the errors if you like and then you get super accuracy on those so with one on each wingtip accurate to within a centimeter we should be able to measure the roll angle your angle of the glider and correlate that to um, control inputs and actually get some real quantitative data about the performance and handling of the glider um, oh. At the moment, this is a baseline, so this is just a standard. This is our standard Evo 3 that we're doing this on to get a good, reliable baseline. And then, as we start to do improvements and developments on it, we'll have we'll have some real solid data to compare to. All sounds a bit geeky to me. I only wanted to know what are those stickers, but now I know. <laughs> Release. tour again it was a bit of a wind up on takeoff on that pimple it always is it's not the best place to take off you don't get the smoothest of air but it means less of a walk if you're going to take off there either be regular on it or seek advice so we're on to treat cliff now Quite strong. Straight to a thermal. When you're going up like this, 
round and round and up and up. It just feels fantastic. Yeah! What a beautiful day. OMG. Julian's just got off into the distance and he's going up all the way the bugger. I'm gonna go follow him. Everyone else has landed now. Just in the own. And this is the best it's been, just going up nicely. <laughs> so Francis in the thermal and skills. It's absolutely imperative in competitions that you can go up fast. That's how the race is won and lost by going up fast. Now 3,000 feet, just above Mam It's really nice. It's a beautiful day. Let's go on a glide. I just flew right out to the end of Loose Hill and I was going down dramatically all the way. So I'm now going back and I'm going back fairly low, but as you can see, we're just nicely making it back onto Mam There you go. So when I get there, I'll just go nicely up. That's the plan. See if it works. There we go, starting to go up on it. Near the beeping. So, into wind. It takes ages to get out of there. Going back with the wind behind you, you whiz back. Back in no time. And going back up again. Yee well, I've had a nice fly around, but I think I'm going to go and land now. I've been up for maybe three hours or so. Well, let's go. So let's go and find the bottom landing field, or rather Windy Knoll. So Tim, we've had a we've had a really good flight and we've landed yeah, now. Uh, with you. How was that thing that you were doing with your harness with logging all the stuff, the yore and pitch and all that? Well, I think we've got I think we've probably got some useful data, but um, yeah, we let the magic smoke come and get out of one of the um, GPS units, so um, so that broke. What? So. Magic smoke. Yeah, didn't you know? All, it's, it's the way all electronics work. So, um, like the engineers tell you, it's all um, it's all electricity and it's electrons flowing around semiconductor chips and all that. But actually, what they do is they go up Himalayan mountains, they um, harvest special um, plants, and then they um, roll them up into really special cigarettes and um, and create magic smoke. And then you trap wow. that magic smoke into those little black chips on the on the surface. Wow. And that's how it all works. And you know that because um, if you touch the wrong wires together, then that magic smoke smoke comes out and once the magic smoke's gone then it doesn't work anymore. So did a load of magic smoke come out of your instruments? Well one of them. <laughs> Hopefully uh, Julian's. Julian. It's always doing it. So. <laughs> he might have been in my hands while it did it. but. Uh. So there you go. Electrical items are really powered by magic smoke.